And I now invite to the floor Ms. Tamar Chugoshvili, first Deputy Chairperson of Parliament and Chair of the Gender Equality Council of Georgia. Madam, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Dear Chair, distinguished delegates, it is my honor to address the 32nd session of Committee of the Status of Women by focusing both achievements and challenges. I would like to reiterate the ambition and dedication of Georgia to empower rural women and girls. This year, Georgia celebrates centennial anniversary of Georgia's first democratic republic. And we celebrate the achievements of the first elected female members of the Georgian parliament a century ago, in 1919, their devotion to equality. By introducing a new provision on equality as part of the constitutional revision process in 2017, Georgia has embarked upon the democratic tradition of the constitution of the first democratic republic. The provision on equality acknowledges the role of state in ensuring gender equality and takes responsibility to implement special measures to ensure substantive equality between men and women. Let me bring to your attention one of the significant achievements of Georgia in 2017. Last year has been significant in terms of fighting domestic violence and violence against women. A year ago, Georgia ratified the Istanbul Convention and passed amendments to more than 20 pieces of national legislation to ensure tangible mechanisms for fighting violence against women. I believe that violence against women is not a standalone problem, but it is undeniably linked to economic empowerment of women, their labor rights, access to reproductive health and rights, as well as to ma maternal health. Georgia is no exception when it comes to major impediments for increased participation of rural women, access to kindergartens, infrastructure, and water supplies. However, the nationwide survey conducted by the UNDP shows that in, in 2017, more than 85% of Georgia's population is satisfied with the access to public services. In recent years, Georgia has taken solid steps to acknowledge the problem of early marriages and develop prevention mechanisms at legislative level. Despite achievements, we acknowledge that participation of poor women, girls, and young women living in rural areas in economic empowerment programs should be increased. Also, rural women's access to finances and the development of their professional skills should be taken into account when designing state policies. Nowadays, women and girls residing in occupied territories of Georgia face unthinkable security threats and challenges in terms of materializing their basic human rights, such as right to education in native language, freedom of movement, and basic, basic multi-sectoral services. Apart from that, thousands of internally displaced women and girls along with women residing in conflict-affected areas, vulnerable groups of women, ethnic minorities, migrants, and refugees require increased opportunities and decent services. Lastly, I believe that real empowerment of rural women and girls should happen through increasing their decision-making capacity. Next week, Parliament of Georgia is to vote for a bill on introducing mandatory gender quota for parliamentary and local elections in Georgia. If supported by the Parliament of Georgia, the bill will guarantee substantive increase in representation of women at all local self-government and national levels. I'm convinced that the ninth sitting of the Parliament of Georgia will take this historic decision for ensuring substantive gender equality in the country. In conclusion, I would like to take this opportunity and reaffirm the Beijing Declaration and the platform for action and express readiness of the Georgia to stay committed to fulfilling the obligations undertaken under the UN CEDAW Convention and UN Security Council Resolution 1325. Dear Chair, distinguished delegates, 
Let me thank you for your attention by quoting Gato Mikeladze, the Georgian feminist of early 20th century. The greatest disaster of the mankind and the nation is to forget and neglect equal rights and civil liberties of women. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Georgia for her statement.